Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we are continuing our discussion of polynomial graphing by talking about roots and their behavior. So when a root is repeated, it can be written as x minus r, where r is the root, raised to the m power. We call this exponent, this m value here, the multiplicity of a root. And a root's multiplicity tells us how the root will behave when it gets to the x-axis. For polynomial roots, there are two ways that a root can behave. If the multiplicity is odd, we will see that the root or the graph crosses through the x-axis at that point. So looking at this example graph that I have here, I see that at negative 3, we must have had an odd multiplicity because our graph crosses through the x-axis. That is also true, again, here at negative 1. Our graph crosses through the x-axis, so it must have an odd multiplicity as well. If a graph has, or if a root has an even multiplicity, then the graph will just touch the x-axis and bounce back. So we see an example of that here at x equals 2, where our graph comes down to touch and bounce back. So that touch and bounce back means we must have had an even multiplicity. Now I also want to talk about really quick the difference between what is going on here at x equals negative 3 and at x equals negative 1. While they do both cross, we can see that they cross a bit differently. Here at negative 3, our graph goes straight through. So we have kind of a linear look to our crossing. That means that our multiplicity was equal to 1. When we have a multiplicity of 1, we cross through in a linear fashion. Here at x equals negative 1, we can see that we cross through in a bit more of a curved way. And that curve might actually remind us of a graph of, let's say, x cubed or x to the fifth. So when we have that curved graphing, we probably had a mul multiplicity of maybe 3 or 5 or some other higher odd number. So within the odd multiplicities, we can even determine the difference between multiplicity 1 and some other higher odd multiplicity. So let's take a look at how we might be able to use that information. So here we have a polynomial written for us in factored form so that we can more easily see the roots. So for this polynomial, we want to list each root list its multiplicity, and then determine what kind of behavior would that root have. Would it touch the x-axis or would it cross the x-axis? So in factored form, we're going to look at each factor, and that is going to give us a root. So here for the factor of x plus 3, if we were to take that factor and set it equal to 0, then the x value that that would give, in this case negative 3, would tell us the x coordinate of our root. So our first root would be negative 3, 0. Now checking for the multiplicity, we know multiplicity comes from the power of that factor. In this case, since we don't see any, we know that it is an understood multiplicity of 1. And because we have an odd multiplicity, you know that odd multiplicity means that our behavior will be to cross the x-axis. Now we can do that for each one of our roots. So taking the next factor, setting that one equal to 0, so x plus 1 equals 0, gives us an x value of negative 1. So we have a root of, or an x-intercept, of negative 1, 0. Looking for our power on that one, since we don't see one, we know that's an understood multiplicity of 1. 
Odd multiplicity gives us cross behavior. And finally, taking our third factor and setting it equal to zero, so x minus five equals zero. Solving for x, we get that x equals five, so we have a root at five, zero. Checking for our power, that's our multiplicity. This time we have a multiplicity of two. And since we have an even multiplicity, that will give us touch behavior. So at x equals five, our graph will just come and touch the x-axis and bounce back. All right, guys, that does it for this intro on polynomial graphing, roots, and their behavior. We'll catch you in the next one for more examples.